It is Trinity Sunday, and as I've mentioned in the past, the Trinity is, a gra- is a, an aspect or an understanding of a God that's difficult to explain and really hold on to. It's, uh, I had a professor that said you could talk about the Trinity for about two minutes before you would dive into some kind of heresy. Because if you spend too much time on it, you're going to think that you know something and they get messed up and try to place God where you think God should be. So I hold on to the belief that the Trinity calls us to embrace the mystery of God, the greatness of God, greater than our wildest imagination, indescribable power, wisdom, and love. Our attempts to understand the nature of God lead us to questions. And here the Gospel of John gives us the story of Nicodemus and his conversation with the Lord. So let us read as it's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. And he came to Jesus by the night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can anyone be born after growing old? Can one enter into a second time into their mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you that no one can enter in the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. And Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, How can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses was lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that God gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, have life eternal. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is always at this time of year, I think, about many of the different seasons of the year in our life. Uh, We've been lucky enough uh, this past week to experience spring and summer, uh, at least partially. And and I I love, I absolutely love the distinct change of seasons that we have here in central New York, where you know when it is winter, and you know when it is spring, you know when it is fall, and you know when it is summer. And about halfway through, at least those bookend seasons of summer and winter, you kind of miss the other half, I think. You know, those days in January and February where you're like, man, sun, sun, sunshine is really nice. It'd be nice if things would warm up again, like get out of my lake. And then there's days in the summer where it's just really hot. Like, fall's going to be really nice. And everybody comes back. 
And we have these times where we just, we're just almost waiting for that next season to come. And we have that with the seasons of our lives, too. I mean, as we think about when we were a child, we think, man, life's going to be so much easier when I can drive. And I, and I have all that freedom and I can do whatever I want. And then I think, man, life's going to be so much easier when I graduate. I go to college. And I have all that freedom and I can do whatever I want. And then you get there. You think, well, maybe, maybe once I'm done with that and I start my job, things will be easier then. Or if I get married, well, then I'll have somebody with me and things will be easier. Or if you're deciding to become parents and you have that child, and you think, man, life's going to get easier after this baby gets out of diapers. <laughs> And you think, man, once you go to school, it'll be a little, a little lighter. And then they start driving. And there's just a whole new set of worries. On top of this, you're, you're at that time where you're working on your career, and you're mortgaging, and you're thinking about retirement. And then you enter into that season of retirement, and you think, man, life's going to be surely easy now. And you realize that there's still those kids that you're worrying about, and maybe those parents on the other that you're worrying about. Then you have grandees, and you have your own health and your spouse, and you think, man, surely tomorrow or this next season will be easier. Think about that a lot when Nicodemus went there to Jesus looking for understanding for where he was in his life and in his faith, thinking maybe things can just be a little bit different if I knew a little bit more. And he comes to Jesus and he wants this understanding and it seems like he almost leaves more confused when he got there. Nicodemus comes to Christ with the understanding that Jesus is sent from God, focused on those miraculous signs that Jesus has done and he announces this understanding to Jesus, and Jesus brings him into something new. A new season of faith. With something different to consider. Something he hadn't seen before. Because Nicodemus is there focused on what he has around him. And Jesus says, you know, you need to be born again. And all Nicodemus can think of is what's here, what he can touch, and what he can see. And Jesus is like, no, there's something more. There's really something more to all of this. It's this idea of being born to the flesh and born to the spirit. We have this scripture here on Trinity Sunday because we come to that time of questions and what it means to be born again, which can vary depending on which church you show up on in a Sunday morning and the feelings about that. Christ talks of water and spirit, of flesh and spirit, of being born from above and the mysteries of the spirit, that undescribable movement of the wind where we know not where it comes from or where it's going. Nicodemus just says, how can these things be? And Christ tries to pull him deeper. He says, aren't you a teacher of God's people? Christ is telling him, these teachings, this movement of the spirit, this rebirth, means that there's something more to your faith. There's something more to your understanding of your relationship with God. That there's more than just what you see here. There's something from above. And then we get to those verses that Christianity knows so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have life eternal. 
And we've taken that over the years and we've made it our own little story. And we've said, well, Jesus came and Jesus died for me, which is good and right to an extent. But there's so much more. We've clung so much to that idea that Jesus came for me. And we forgot that it doesn't ever say that. Because for God so loved the world. It's more than just me. I've always held on to the belief that the goodness of God's love is that Jesus came for me. The greatness of God's love is that Jesus came for the world. And there's both of those there. And that's part of those things we're meant to think about here on Trinity Sunday. Is that there's more. There's more to your understanding of your faith. There's more to your relationship with God. More than you can ever imagine. More than you can ever describe. We're never going to understand the fullness of love. And every time that we try, every time we try to say that we know God, all we're doing is just saying words. There's more out there, more from above that's going to blow in like the wind. And your life can be changed. We live in a world that really thrives on certainty. Where I want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, I, I look at the weather apps on my phone a few times a day just to see, you know, when's the rain going to show up? How long is it going to last? What the temperature is going to be tonight or tomorrow or next week? Or sometimes, you know, I don't know why. You know, what's the weather like where my parents are right now? Uh, I, I need the certainty of what's going on. And Jesus comes along and says, it's time for you to embrace what you don't know. You live there for a while. Because it's great. We see just the moment of God's love. Embrace the uncertainty that we have. But it's bigger than we can imagine. And God's love doesn't stop with me. But it's so great, it's for the world. Let us not get caught up in those times where Christianity gets this notion that, man, we really need something to condemn. I see not come to do. Let us see. Let us embrace that. Let us lift that up. Let us talk about the salvation, this renewal, this born againness of flesh and spirit of a God that is really with us. And in that, you know the love. Love of God and love for our neighbor. So there are no big answers here, my friends. A lot of times when Nicodem when you have an experience with the Lord, you're left with more questions to explore. Embrace it. Know that you're never gonna fully know God while you walk this earth. God will fully know you. And creator and redeemer and sustainer. The Lord with us in the Trinity. Amen.